Hello and welcome to this episode of Packet Racer. In this episode, we want to discuss about creating an answer network for Activity Wizard. So let's get started. As you can see here, I have my answer network. I have created two PCs and I have set the IP address for each one of them. And here I have created a PDU that if I fire this PDU, you can see that this ping packet from PC0 to PC1 is successful. You can see the source is PC0 and the destination is PC1 and the ping is successful. And I want to make an assessment based on this answer network. Now let's go to the activity wizard and open activity wizard. I will be prompt with this window. Do I want to use the current network as the answer network? Yes, of definitely I want to use this network as my answer network. I will say yes. And you have to remember that I manually created this answer network. We have the ability to import answer networks and that will be covered later on during this course. Here I have my activity wizard window and I go to the answer network section. Here I have the assessment tree. So I have created the answer network, but in here I will choose and select that which components that I want to be assessed. I want to go to PC0 and here under ports, under fast Ethernet 0, I want IP address to be assessed and subnet mask to be assessed. Let's close PC0, go to PC1, ports, fast Ethernet. IP address and subnet mask. These are the two items, these are the two components that I want this activity wizard to be assessed against. So I have chosen those. And now I will go to connectivity test. In here I have my connectivity test because I had created a ping packet from PC0 to PC1 and that's why I have this connectivity test available for me in here. Do I want this connectivity test to be included for the activity wizard? Definitely I want it. I want it to be successful. If it was not successful, that means that the candidate that is taking this assessment has failed to complete the test. We will cover code testing and scoring model later on. Let's go to the overall feedback for now. You can see that we can create custom feedbacks. So if somebody completed the the assessment uh, properly, they will get this feedback for a complete feedback. Congratulations on completing this activity. And I'll add like something like Yahoo. And they and if they didn't complete the activity, then they will be prompt with this incomplete feedback. This activity is incomplete. Please try again. Good luck next time. We also have the ability to provide immediate feedback for each of the components in the assessment tree. For example, for PC0, for IP address, I will create a feedback when it's incorrect. If I double click on it, then I can write the IP address was not provided correctly. You can see that this feedback is provided when that assessment item is incorrect. Let's go back to the overall feedback. And that's it. Let's go to the next tab. We have the settings tab. Here in the settings tab, we have the different timing settings that can be applied to this activity. So the time elapsed will start time from zero and will start counting from zero to one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and it will go on. The countdown will start from a countdown of uh, default 10 minutes and will continue until zero. And you can, of course, set your countdown or we can totally remove the time settings altogether. The feedback settings enables dynamic feedback that will assess the user's network against the assessment tree every few seconds and will give them some type of feedback. So you can see that by default we have the show item count percentage. So if the candidate or the user that's taking this assessment and they complete certain uh, type of activities, then they will see that how much of the activity they have completed. And as such, we have other ways of providing dynamic feedback such as score, 
or item count or percentage but uh, for example for score we would need to uh, create the scoring model the user profile locking will make the user to create a profile before starting the assessment and it will be mandatory for them and they will not be allowed to use the guest profile which is the default uh, profile and the time to forward the answer network is a few milliseconds or um, maybe hundred or thousand milliseconds that you want the answer network to go forward because maybe if you have a switch in between the uh, STP will take some time to initialize if you have routers it will take some time to propagate the routing tables and that's how you can forward your assessment network uh, based on this time and that's it for this episode everyone I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes where we will cover the activity wizard in more details and we will also cover all of the options that you can see here in the answer network that's it for this episode everyone stay tuned